I'm going to record it. You want to give him a few more minutes, Corey, or? Maybe a couple, maybe just two more minutes. Let's see what happens here. How you been? I've been good. Yeah. I had a nice morning. Um, a couple of my friends from the sweat lodge, um, wanted to go and uh, check out a track of land. Um, they're, uh, they do, they make their own bows and points and they're traditional bow hunters and they're, I mean, they're, they're sort of like deep naturalists is what they are, but it's sort of just sort of part of their, you know, that whole, uh, primitive skills repertoire and deep nature connection. So which is a lot of fun, just getting out onto the land and looking at the, you know, just starting with like those kind of the very same, you know, it's not different than non-directed, like, you know, you stepping out uh, into this, this, this context in this environment, and you're just trying to those start those sort of first waves of receiving it as it is, you know, and you start to let the wandering happen as we sort of go off path and just walk into the bush and, you know, and all oh, like there's a porcupine living here and the woodpeckers are here and, you know, well, which direction's west and, you know, all of those kind of, kind of things, you know, so it's, uh, it, it's funny how deeply transferable, um, yeah. well, it makes sense, right? Meeting reality should be deeply transferable. <laughs> but yeah, so it's just nice to be out. It's a rainy, kind of rainy, drizzly day, but, you know, I, I like, um, well, you don't see that as uh you just see that as an invite, like anything else, you know, to. Right, right. Yeah. We used to have this um, on uh, at Tahoma on the island, the monastery. We used to have these um, elders would come um, from from Canada and I think from Montana, and they would do a sweat lodge there, and um, they were amazing. They were amazing, and I met um, like the guy. We did. There was this Uweepi ceremony in in British Columbia. I went to, which was. Yeah mind-blowing absolutely mind-blowing but um i um there was a one guy this elder floyd young man he came and he was awesome and but they would do they were gonna have the the lodge and you know we're these zen, zen people so there's like a clock everywhere you know yeah. so, getting crazy about the clock you know got, oh, got yeah. me, you know and then oh we're gonna do the lodge you know and it it would be hours you know Hour, yeah, like, oh, exactly. we're gonna go do it you know we'd be you know, the Zen people can't, you know, we're just freaking. They can't handle this. <laughs> they can't handle it, you know? <laughs> We've got dinner at six and we have to eat it in 20 minutes. <laughs> right, right, right. I, I was got... at a Uweepi this, I was at a Uweepi this weekend. Uh, and actually out of that, I'm going fasting in North Dakota the first week of May. Uh, with that, with that uh, Uweepi man, like, uh, like we're going to be up in, so... Yeah. Yeah, it's trippy, man. It's trippy. It is trippy. It's all you know. I've been to many, and and it never gets less trippy. It never. It it the mystery never ceases to oh. amaze. Yeah, yeah. That's a yeah. that's its own conversation of. Right, right. Hey, well, well. Um, please. Um, we'll kick in. Yeah. So I guess, like you know, I'm I'm happy to. Um, I, I don't have. I mean, I can take it. We can take a lot of directions, but. Um, you know, there's so many, I guess, let me, let me just start with just a little of that and maybe we can maybe open it up more to a question format quickly. I think the thing to recognize with fasting is that you can't, I mean, there's, there's going to be a temptation and, and, and there is a utility to break it down in a kind of reductionistic framework is, is this for spiritual reasons? Is this for health reasons? Is, you know, what is the physiology of it? What is the psychology of it? Um, those kind of things are, and, and there's some fruitful conversations for sure to go down any of those paths and maybe in some ways to sort of flush it all out, you have to go down them. But I, I think the first thing to recognize is fasting is always a, like a holistic pursuit. Like it's, it, because you're always engaging the entirety of the system, the entirety of the being within the context of this moment or the context of the fast. Um, so it, 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 it really is one of these lovely, um, gateways of, of, of true holism. Like you, you know, you might have targeted and the only things that ever is targeted are just ideas that live in the mind. The, the truth is the body will always bring you into those, you know, broader, um, more 
interconnected and interdependent and sort of holistic states of exploration. So, um, and I think it's just, it's also one of those things too, right? That I, that I, what I love about it is, it is actually one of those deep evolutionary gateways. Like as long as there's been life um, and life has had a demand for, uh, for energy and its materiality and its expression in the world, there's been fasting. So there, you know, and there's been the like, you know, like, for example, even one celled organisms in, in times where there's not much water, or there's not much nutrient, you know, the, the, the dormancy sort of principles that they'll, you know, that they'll, they'll go into an almost non living state to remain in this minimal dormancy, and then, you know, come forth when the conditions change. And so this is a, like, I mean, it's not just ancient as a human practice. Um, but it's, 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 it's just so deeply ancient as an evolutionary lineage of we are as living beings. And then of course, as human beings, um, you know, it, it, it's part of the timing and rhythms of a, of a, of a season, you know, like dry and wet seasons, times of abundance, times of scarcity, um, times for movements, times for rest or the four seasons, you know, like that winter time of, of, again, of, of, of dark, of scarcity, of of retreat, um, there's something so powerful even about the daily circadian rhythms that, you know, when we eat too late in the evening, um, that we actually throw off those natural rhythms of, um, you know, those deep biological clocks. So, you know, there's just so many elements of it here that have like a um, such a a deep root. And, and the one thing I've all, I, I'm going to say, like, I'm I am always interested when something you can see so profoundly rooted in the biology rather than the psychology. So for example, like I'm, I'm doing psychotherapy work and you think, oh, psychotherapy, psychology. But to me, I've become more of a physiologist than I've ever become before. Like, like to me, for example, trauma is a metabolic, is actually a metabolic issue. Like it is just as the digestion is, is, has to deal with digesting food, that sort of, um, neuropsychophysiological system, you know, that is the autonomic nervous system that deals with the nature of uncertainty and traumatic interaction, like there's a metabolism there as well, too, you know, and so, so right away with fasting, it, it does open up branches of the metabolism, allowing for things to be digested. Um, when you're not busy digesting something else, you allow time for something else to be digested, right? And so, uh, so I think just like this practice, it's, it's, we're, we're, we're entering it through the body. I mean, they're just something just so utterly powerful. I think from, um, uh, when we engage just the body as such and, uh, and to see then, uh, the mechanisms that come forward, you know, the one thing I just to give a, a sense of the scope, cause I think we miss the, the powerful miracle. I call these sort of like the mundane miracles or the mundane mysteries. But if you think of eating, for example, there's the conscious element. Oh, like, um, well, the, there's the conscious element that acknowledges the body that, you know, I'm hungry. There's a gnawing in my stomach. You know, when we pick up on that signal consciously. And then we, you know, we go to the fridge, we prepare the a food of choice, you know, and uh, still conscious and we make it and we bring it to our mouth and we take a bite and we go chew, chew, chew and still conscious and chew, 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 still conscious and we swallow. And that's the end of the consciousness, right? I mean, all of a sudden, the smooth muscle of the esophagus is bringing it down. It is going into the stomach. The acids are producing, you know, the stomach is churning it fall into the small intestine, the pancreas, the, the gallbladder and all the things that work its way through. But then you think about like from the moment we swallow, right? Not only is there the gross digestion, stomach, small intestine, large intestine and all the organs, but then all of a sudden there's the absorption and there's the lymph and there's the blood. And these nutrients and these wastes are working their way in. And then we think that all of a sudden there's a trillion cells that are participating in this with tens of thousands of cascades of signaling. That is literally the alchemy of transformation that we can take whatever these carbon based things that grow out in there and somehow transform it, transform it, break it down and rebuild it in all of these ways. And I mean, the order and the speeds that these things are happening in the orders of magnitude and these cascading exponentials. And then we take what we need and we expel what we don't. 
And that's just our cells, never mind the 10 trillion cells of the bacteria that are also participating in this complexity and feeding themselves and feeding us and all of this transformation. Like that's that like like that to me is what I mean by a mundane miracle, right? We have no because it's at a different level of domain, the, the anatomical domain, the physiological domain, the biochemical domain that we don't experience in that level. But that's all happening, right? And and then we experience it, you know, in 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 these broader sense of our of that of that human domain. And so I to bring that up in eating, but the same types of complexities are happening in fasting, you know, as we you know, as we start to engage these different systems. And so I, I think that there really is a chance to just really kind of start to connect to the level of wonderment that that and complexity that that really is. Um, so anyway, that, that's just my little sort of just to sort of set uh, an introduction of of uh, of this in, in both a holistic domain, a deep evolutionary set and, and recognizing the miracle of 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 this. The one thing I would also say is that, that when we think about how central eating is throughout the day and that and that the role that fasting is played through history, I actually just as there's two bodies, there's a fed body and a fasted body. I find in my own experience, it brings out two two separate senses of myself, like like as a, as a uh, there's a fasted bill and a fed bill and they're very different. They're very different people. Like they it, like like both of those offers up very very different windows of experience and um, and um, yeah I wouldn't say insight that's not the right word but like experience like literally direct experience like a direct experience of of a world the fasted me from the fed and the fed me are are two very different senses of that um, so I think that that's a very interesting thing to go down um, I know we've had our podcast in the past that we did talked a little bit about this, but maybe maybe it might be good to just make this a question driven day today, Corey, and 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 then I can riff off what people are interested in because there's a lot of different directions that we can go on. Sounds great. Sounds great. Yeah. Anybody wants to just um, jump in with a question, please. So when you're fasting, how long time do you do it? And, and how does that feel? Yeah, the, so that's, that's, that's a good timeline to trace, actually. So, you know, the, the mo let's start with the most mundane, again, the most simple everyday one, which is just over, your overnight sleeping, right? Like, like that, the, the idea of the breakfast, right? The breaking the fast. So the first one is to, there's a chance to, to be corrective, right? Which is have a real sense of when you want to stop eating, you know, after that last meal of the day, but there really should be a sense of stopping taking in calories. So the body is like, oh, we're in a fasting mode now. And, and actually there is a lot of research coming out about the proper alignment to light, like, uh, like to this, because this is a, a broader issue of circadian rhythm. So the morning light, the evening night, blue lights in the morning, red lights at night, you know, uh, exercise and eating, all of this is, is going to, uh, drive a circadian rhythm with women. It's of course it's even more complex because we have a monthly, um, the the monthly um, uh, menstrual cycle also layered on this. And, and just uh, let me just say that right now, there's a there, that there's a whole emergent understanding that women's fasting is probably different than men's fasting, uh, particularly women that are, um, you know, still within um, menstruation, not you know, not premenopausal. There's a really interesting book out right now called. Um, uh, fast like a girl, uh, which is actually a whole book dedicated for women in fasting, which really takes into account uh, their rhythmicity as being separate from men. And so I, I really think that's an important honoring. So the, the reason I bring up the first timing is that you want to get that timing right, like in terms of the, for health, uh, specifically, correctively. And then the other part is the notion, this very notion of just the, the three meals in the day, right? So the, the fasting literally between meals. So um, I'm 53, so I was actually of the age that you know you you had only you had three meals a day, and there wasn't snacks. The whole thing like snacks came in later. Snacks was like an 80s thing. There wasn't snacks in the 70s. Nobody gave you snacks. There wasn't snack time at school. You know, you had there was still the time that mom said like, well, if you're not going to eat your lunch, you're not getting anything till dinner, and if you're not eating dinner, there's nothing till breakfast next morning. Like, right? So there was the notion of the three meals a day, and and actually that's very important. So like if we think about our our obesity and diabetic epidemic. 
Uh, that's an insulin. It's a hormonal driven epidemic. And the problem is when you snack all day, you're producing insulin all day. And when you're producing insulin all day, you're on a fat storing mode rather than a, a storing utilization, storing utilization rhythm. And that's the major reason, one of the, one of the, there's many reasons, but it's one of the major reasons we have the diabetic and epidemic uh, and obesity epidemic is that people are eating all the time. And so there was like even that notion in weight, remember a few years back it was like, if you're working at the gym, we should have eight meals a day, <laughs> you know, like these little, they'd make these little micro meals and you would just like, and it turns out that that's uh, probably, it's just, it was a terrible idea. Um, it goes against sort of the evolutionary dictates of how we ate and, and, and our system. So the first timing of fasting is getting your nighttime fast right and having your appropriate fast throughout the day, these micro fasts, right? So to establish that first, like the, and, and that actually then is about really about the right relationship to feeding. But you recognize that feeding is always the minimum. Like we're, we should be eating far less in a day than we're not eating. So that's sort of the first kind of correction, like, 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 cause right now most people eat, you know, some kind of intake more than they don't. And that's a, that's, that's a modern day inversion. So that's the first corrective one. Um, then, you know, from there, you can sort of think about um, the notion of intermittent fasting, right? So we have this idea of a feeding window, right? So we have, we can then say, well, rather than feeding throughout the day, maybe I'm going to just eat within an eight hour window. Right, so then I have 16 hours now, for example, that I'm not eating. The thing that's uh, interesting about what's, what are the changes that start happening with intermittent fasting really is around insulin regulation and regaining insulin sensitivity and putting your hormones onto the right order. You might have just, if you go long enough, you might have just the beginnings of an hour or so of what we call autophagy, like that cleaning, that self-eating, that self-cleaning of all the broken down aspects in the cells, mitochondria, um, proteins, different things that have been broken down. So once you get into that, like 14 hours of fasting, you start to hit that window a little bit, right? Just the edge of it, but mainly it's for hormonal regulation and making sure that we have that right bit. You could go down to the Nixer level, which is a, like they call OMAD, one meal a day, right? So that you could have this idea of just, you're eating just one time a day, which is really essentially now a 23 hour fast. So you're gonna have more autophagy, you're gonna have more ketone production. And if you start to do that as a pattern, you will have a lot less glycogen stores, which is like this, the, uh, the uh, animal starch that we, we hold and store in the liver and our muscles. And so you'll see that you fall into ketosis, that kind of fruity breath, you're producing more ketones now and that your storage of of an internal sort of sugar source is is less so you're now switching the metabolic engine particularly if you're doing that regularly to a more of a fat burning engine rather than a carb burning engine and you're increasing that sort of sense of 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 um um uh, yeah like just just of um how how like that all that cleansing and things that are going on I think from a psychological perspective, you know, the things that are useful in, the, in that mode or that length of fasting really is the breaking of habits. Like how often do you just reach to the fridge, like sort of habitually and mindlessly and reach or start to put something in your mouth, not because you're necessarily hungry, but either that it's a habit or the notion of emotional eating, you know, or these kind of, or, or that we're just not a, a generation of people that likes to, any notion of discomfort. You know that in some sense it's an avoidance strategy um, to feel the body in its need rather than always always in its satisfaction or or satiety, right? So there is a, a sense now to start having that sense of of, of letting go of that that those holdings and clinging clingings to that the, the the full or satisfied feelings and and trying to feel the body in a, a little bit of um. Well, I'm going to use the word discomfort, but not as a pejorative. You know, like it's just like oh, the body gets to feel it. You know, you get you get to listen to the, its signals more clearly. You know, it lets you actually have the ears to start hearing the body in what it's trying to tell you and in its needs, and it start putting you into a more body centered kind of consciousness. Um, once you sort of hit that first twenty four hours, you know, I think that this is um, kind of the beginning of a, the initial sort of sense of a longer fast, like to go your first kind of day, and I'd say it's that twenty four to thirty six hours, um, and and. This is always, I think that this one always remains hard, like no matter how much I fast, 
I still think that the, that 24 to 36 hours is the most difficult because any time that I've gone back to back to my eating patterns, it's like you have to kind of continually reinvent reinvent yourself in this. Like, you know, I've gone back to my old habits. And so I, I actually, I think it's an important milestone for people. Um, but usually at 20, I'm kind of my, I, I, this is my crabby phase. Like, like I'm not necessarily the nicest person to be around at the 24 to 36 hour mark. Cause there's also a whole lot of like, again, the blood sugar regulation, everything that's been out of whack, like you start to feel the consequence of that. Um, and there's not really adaption yet, you know, especially if, uh, you haven't maintained a kind of adaptive diet in between. Um, but I think that's a good milestone. I think people can feel good about that. Um, obviously there's the beginning of more like autophagy, like there's more at this point, there's more cellular cleaning. You are starting to produce, um, more ketones and your insulin levels are dropping off and, and coming down to a more flat baseline level, which is allowing the cells to reboot towards their sensitivity. So then the next level day two often feels a little better for me. And if day two is really interesting. If I get to day two, it's the beginning of detox. So like I, I find that actually it doesn't matter how many showers I take, my armpits will be stinky all day long. Like, like, you, you know, so there, there is all of a sudden the sense that by the second day, there is a more profound sort of detoxing coming forward. Uh, that for me often accumulates in day, some people feel day two worse. For me, my day three is usually the, the worst. Um, there is a, uh, a lot of detoxing and often, you know, headachey, want to be in bed, not feeling like doing much. My energy is usually my lowest on, on day three. Um, so there's that kind of element. And, but by day three, two, you've also are, there's what is called naturesis where you start dropping a lot of salt and we don't quite know why this happens, but you start dropping a lot of salt. You've used up your glycogen stores and they hold a lot of water. So, the glycogen is no longer holding water, the salt is going out and your body's water is following it. And so there's actually a big, also the beginning of a quite a, a drop of um, water weight. And I actually find this quite healthy because you know how, um, especially as I get older, if I'm not looking after myself, like my, you know, my wife might say, oh, you look a little bloated, you're looking puffy, you don't look well, you're looking a little pale or pasty, you know, these kind of things. And then all of a sudden that, water weight starts coming off and blood pressures normalize and it's a little it's a little tricky because you are dropping some electrolytes too so i'm feeling better that the water weight's coming off but also the electrolytes are sort of dumping quite a lot at this point so you know it's it's kind of i find that often it starts to become like a sine wave like i'm up i'm down i'm up i'm down you know in the course of the day the hunger is starting to settle so there's a progressive from the beginning of the fast where those hunger the ghrelin hormone starts to Get less and less so you still have waves of hunger throughout entire fast but they get much more muted um as we go along and that sort of kicks in in the day that sort of day three um so then when you for me day four is kind of a renewal or rebirth like i find like day four or five it's kind of a like starts to like i'm like oh i'm thinking about maybe if i'm doing a four or five day fast at the very moment I'm thinking about ending it, I'm, I'm actually feeling, start to feel really good into it. And day or four or five has some other lovely things that come through. So they're not just autophagy, autophagy, but you're setting up your body at this point for what's called apoptosis. So um, the killing off of really, um, 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 uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not senility, but um, like these old cells, right? Like cells that are old and not working very well. The body will have like programmed cell deaths for those kind of things. Uh, that's actually really good in sort of cancer prevention once you hit day four or five, like cells that are like sort of getting a little funky, or not cancers, but a little funky, like the body goes, oh, they're not so good. Let's, 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 let's program death and get them off. And also at the same time, stem cells start kicking in. So this is kind of like that day four or five is like where the rejuvenative processes really kick in and your body um, will start the beginning of stem cell production. We really see this, the immune system will take a big dive in four or five, like your white blood cell count will go down quite significantly um, in those days. But what you'll see as soon as you start eating again, it ramps it right back up with brand new fresh, like it's, a, like it's literally a rebooting of the immune system. So you know, these are really, these day four or five becomes quite powerful. And I tell people, if you can get to day three, 
why not do four or five? Because three is the hard day. Like you really start to get some really nice benefits uh, in those couple of days. Day four or five, people start noting like, oh, your eyes are so clear. You can see it yourself. Like, like the eyes are funny, like this sort of gateway to the soul, but they really take on this profound clarity and I, I, and I don't think it's just physiological. Like, I don't think it's just the clearing of the physiology. Like something shows up there that people can see that you can see. Like there is a clarity and, there, and I, I think it's, there's a mystery there. And, and that clarity that comes forth in the eyes and that people can see um, also is in a clarity in thought. Once you get to day four or five, all of the brain fog, the cognition is super sharp. Like the body might not have the energies to say work out at the gym, although the energies are leveling off and everyday tasks, like including going for walks and what have you, no problem. But the brain, like, the, like the, the mentality becomes just so crystal clear. The focus starts to come in very crystal clear. And then after that, like once you get past day five, there's like cycles of where you'll go into like more like deeper, deeper detoxes as the fat burns off the bones, like, like where there's stuff that's been stored there will be these pocket days of release and they can feel quite awful. And sometimes there can even be crises like rashes, arthritis, headaches, your mental sort of well-being kind of crashing. So there is a notion of a therapeutic crisis that you have to be sort of very aware of and attuned to as you start to go in through the longer cycles. But I find it the most I've ever fasted was 24 days plus I had a four days like false start before so I called it like four plus 24 and um and what like this was a water fast and um you know and so again what I also found is not only was the clarity of the mind and um and the and, and as a matter of fact there's times where energy seems actually building like there's a a building of a kind of energy or vitality uh, sleep becomes much less uh, which makes sense like so you end up sleeping like like it's hard to fall asleep or slay asleep so probably sleep in longer fast probably goes down to like three to five hours because you're producing a lot of noradrenaline because the evolutionarily you have to go, go out and hunt <laughs> like it's still trying to motivate you to go find your food still so you actually become quite alert um but you don't feel tired not having had that sleep so it's, it's not like an ins like it is a a kind of insomnia but with not the uh the problems of an insomnia like i like it, it doesn't it doesn't uh I create that kind of drag and then somewhere around day seven ten it is really like um like just the, the flow of emotion like you know um the minute i like i like i just want to tell like the people that i love in my life i'm just like i just really love you like i'm just feeling it all right like, like it's literally just emotionality bubbling all the time like it and towards yourself to the world and it's not like well there can be griefs but you're but it's not but it's all flow so there's no like stuckness or attachment like it just it's just this profound like whenever i would move into the sphere of other human beings i just would feel so much after day seven day 10 like so much right and and so every conversation felt very meaningful not manic like just very meaningful um every moment just felt like just like with flowing richness of um of of i'm even talking about now it's actually re-evoking that sense of it like i mean it just really would would, would move into um yeah there's just this this sense of um I'd be curious if there, if there was a lot of oxytocin at a chem, like a biochemical level being produced or something, but there's a lot of attachment, like, 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 like in a really positive sense, like, of just like you, you feel that deep attachment to other human beings and, and, and it, it's moving and flowing. Um, those longer days start to have some pretty profound, uh, like cleansings, like some of this, like, like, you know, like, again, some of the stuff that starts coming up, it's pretty deep, like I like on, and some of the emotionality that comes with that too. So, the notion of a cleansing on on many levels and this idea of fasting and spirituality i mean at that once you get past that well it starts i would say around day five but day seven day ten like yeah like practices like i mean because in some ways you're, you're looking to feed on something else so it's like rather than having dinner well, i'll just stand here non-directed for two hours like but but it's but there's no activation energy required like you know it's not like oh i gotta drag my ass to the mat or i gotta Oh, I should do this. Like it's it's 
you know, there's just this time. I mean, that's the other thing. There's just so much time when you're not eating and digestion, digesting. There's just a lot of time in the day, uh, like your efficiencies and, and the things you can do. In that 24 days, I never stopped work. I saw my patients. I cooked dinners for my kids. I, I, I did everything in the house. Like I never stopped. Like it wasn't a retreat from life. Um, you know, so and I think it's harder for first time fasters. I think you got to get like two or three, five, four or five days under your belt. And then you realize, oh, actually, I just thought I was, you know, you, you, you realize most of your, your limitations are in your mind. It, the truth is, is, uh, you know, there's a lot more of it, which makes sense because if you didn't, you know, the point is these hunter gatherers had to actually get up and move to find their food. Um, it wasn't laying you up, you know, it, it actually lets you found a nice evenness to go and participate in the world still. I might've taken a nap at three o'clock or something like, you know, kind of gentleness, like of just, uh, but then would be pop right back up. So anyway, those are the, the you know, and, and I think the notion of right up to a 40 day, there's some things you have to think about. You have to actually have the fat stores to do a longer term fast. Like if you're a skinny person, because starvation is different than fasting. So if you are at a, a very low level of body fat and you are actually in a starvation mode, meaning you're burning your muscle stores now because you don't have fat stores, that's a real problem. That, that's a problem. That's actually, uh, that's not a healthy act. So so these longer fasts sort of predicate that you've got some stores <laughs> that you can carry. Um, and, uh, and if you don't, you, you have to think of shorter fasting cycles, really. Um, other reasons to not fast, like if you had an eating disorder, obviously, um, you know, and there's some other things that you have to think about if you're on medications and things like that. But, um, but anyway, there's, there's, a, there's a very broad time frame. I hope that answers your question of like a, a sort of changes and points to some different things, but yeah. Any other questions uh, or thoughts? Uh, yeah, that was really interesting. Thank you. Um, I, I'm curious about like, um, and you started to mention this, but uh, just like how this sort of action endeavor interplays with like a life live like going to work and like showing up for people and like if I don't know I when I think about it I have like fear come up around well like I would just be like and I work with people so I'd just like be really grumpy and like um yeah harsh at my job and like um stuff like that comes up it's like oh that's why I I can't do that you know I think I think um, in the beginning, you, you create timings, like start on a Thursday evening, you know, you won't be too grumpy on the Friday, you can be an asshole at home on the Saturday and the Sunday, you'll be feeling much better by Monday, you know, and you can sort of wrap up your four or five days. So like, I think when you're first beginning, um, and I wouldn't do if you, if you're not expect, I wouldn't do more than a four or five day, like, uh, if you have health issues, you obviously still have to talk with a physician, figure that out. If you're relatively healthy, young, I don't think there's a real issue with four or five days. There's some things you have to watch for, like you can have low blood pressure drops. So you have to be careful of like getting up too fast and getting dizzy. Like there's things like that, that you need to, um, you know, that you need to sort of look for. So I think you can start that the, the simple one Thomas just say to like, like just to pick your timings, you know, like a long weekend, um, that kind of thing and just start in with, with that level. Um, and when once you've done like two or three of those and you realize, like I have a, I have one of my patients just did a second five day um, related to chronic health issues and some mental health issues. And he just literally finished it last week. And he said, oh, like the difference between my first five day and my second five day was remarkable. And I think it's two parts. I think even though it was a year apart, there's still things that we're carrying over from that profound cleansing of those five days. Like he, he, he didn't like go back to zero and then again, like he 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 went back a little but there was the crossover that let him come even further in that process and his psychology was starting to change already even just in too fast like that he was testing his capability and his ability to be in the world and take care of things so once you get two or three or four of those then you're like oh i'm, I'm actually realize i am much more capable to do to do things uh than than sort of the limit i had had, had perceived or had thought or expected um, so I would just introduce yourself gently to it. And, and I would say it's a great question and, and it's a great question to test for yourself, right? Like to literally test into it. And rather than it being a question that stops you from doing it, 
like as an excuse. I think it's a great question to test into and cyclically and gently. I'm not a big fan. You know, I know there's like Corey and I are this way, like we're kind of like all or nothing extremists. And, and, and that's been useful, but it's gotten me in a lot of trouble around things too, you know? And so I would say with this, this um, I, and I've experimented with all sorts of crazy stuff and all of this, um, but I, I think there's a way to do it like kindly, gently, cyclically, you know, and, and, and building a, a, an easy capacity. And I'm at the point in my life, like I used to be a real purist, like, oh, water only, da, da, da. And, you know, like to not break a fast. So the only way you'll break a fast if you take in, a protein or carbohydrate that will break the fast. You could actually take a spoonful of olive oil that won't break the fast metabolically because it doesn't, it doesn't bring forth insulin. So when I fast now, I, I drink herbal teas because I like, um, because I like the flavor, like I like some flavor or some taste, you know, like, like, you know, there's just, just there's, it's tedious. So like to break up the tedium, um, if I'm doing a long fast, I actually take a small, um, a small amount of, of olive oil. So my gallbladder will empty. Like I don't want a gallbladder stasis over if I'm doing like a long, like, you know, like seven, 10 days. Like I want, I don't, I don't want to have one like gallstones. Like there is things that you have to think about in all of this. Um, uh, if I'm doing a really long fast, I, I don't, I, I don't see the problem with taking as like a very, like sort of minimal electrolyte supplement. A, it helps to level me off a little bit, which is, it is already challenging enough. I don't need to at this point in my life feel like I need the hardest of challenges, you know? So there's, there's lots of conversations that can be had about this. There's lots of people that are like all are, are zealots and dogmatic. It's gotta be this way, you know, but, but, um, but I, I think this is a chance sometimes to, to fast from my dogma and my zealot, my all or nothing nature too. Right. So, you know, you, you have to think of fast in those broader spirits as well too. Um, yeah. I hope that answers the question. And yeah, the other thing that I would be curious about is just like what sort of prep you would do as like, cause I'm not somebody who's fasted before. So I'm um, just That's like, great, yeah. yeah. Great question. So I think um, given the time um, I would get off coffee the week before, like caffeine the week before. So you don't have like caffeine withdrawal on top of everything. Right. So I'd, you know, I, and I'm nice to myself when I get off my coffee, I take Advil like so because I know that headache's going to come, you know, and I, I don't and I'm like I'm fasting next week. So I'm going to, you know, I don't mind, you know, like I, I just want to like, you know, sort of like that. That's one thing. If you've got some time, you can think about diet change a few weeks before, you know, um, I'm not I'm in no way a vegan, but like you could go to a more higher plant based diet just for its like just sort of easing the system, you know, just creating a more whole foods kind of diet. And uh, sort of the notion, not, not again of, of, of anti meat, but just high plant, high nutrient, like you would for all of those like micronutrients and things like that. And, and also just cleansing out the GI tract and getting all of that moving out. Um, if you really want to feel really primed, like, um, and, and to actually give you make the fast easier, it's like you're going to you can sort of front load your suffering. If you did a like a pure, like a very low carb or a keto diet reboot for four weeks prior to a fast, like a longer term fast starting, then you're already going to be in ketosis. You're already going to have a ketogenic engine running metabolically. Your mitochondria, we talk about autophagy, which is the general like like cleansing, like eating up of all of the broken things in the body. But there's a specifically metophagy where all of those old mitochondria that aren't working very well and have been burning sugar way too long, kind of like it's like a furnace building, burning softwood with all of its sap, like like versus a hardwood, you know, more efficient, hotter burn. You know, you will have already sort of set those processes um, and and then then to go to go on your fast. If you've already if you had a, a, a one week a one month keto sort of a boot camp reboot that would kind of almost put you in the equivalence of like a day three, like starting on day three for the fast. And then if you did four or five days, it's like all of that extra benefit that your, your engines are already moving for. So that's a good prep. And then the other thing is time. Like you just have to like these they're kind of like commitments. Like, I mean, like going to, um, you know, like going to a, a station or something like, a, like, um, you know, like, um, you know, going to an intensive or anything. It's like that mental prep of, 
like it's a date on the calendar, you know, and I think you, you really need to have that sense like, like of, of here it is. I think if you woke up one day, oh, I've done that. And, and actually sometimes that's a useful intuition, but I think it's worth having you on the calendar. Like this is the day, this is when it starts, you know, and, and I, I have that kind of sense of preparation for it. And, it, and like you said, like if, if you're new at it, like weekends, long weekends, times that you, especially in those first few fasts, you probably do want to take it very easy. Like the, you know, nap and gentle walks and hot baths and, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, so when I've been fasting, I've been drinking a lot of tea, so a lot of caffeine as well. But you're saying the opposite? No, no, that's not a problem. Again, again, what do you want to, again, it's a good opportunity to, to do uh I love my caffeine, so I'm, 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 I'm not I, like, I, but you know, if you want to do a re like, just to have a, like literally give the chance for to have a caffeine sort of reboot. I find that these are good opportunities for that since you are now, but the truth is actually when I did my longer fast, I, I, you know, I, I did still have caffeinated teas and things because I, I, in some ways I, I, I actually felt even clearer. I didn't have any milk or any sugar or anything like that. It was just the, like, you know, because I would break the fast, but um, well, I had to say that I kind of, I did, I did actually appreciate the caffeine in, in, in some of my fasts. I've appreciated that, um, that interaction with the clarity. Like I actually found it was, it, that, that felt, that felt useful and good. So, which makes sense if you think about green tea in Japan, like, like, you know, like there's sometimes where these practices are, you know, there is a kind of intensity and there's sometimes some nice things that come in together you know, as this kind of synergy, um, but there's no right or wrong answer. I don't, someone will tell you there's a wrong answer. I, I think like it's, 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 it's you try both. Yeah. Do the experiments, see what the difference is for you. I think that, that that's, that there's a lot of chance to, to create distinctions so that you can see, well, how am I with this and how am I with that? Um, the nice thing is when you're on, when you are fasting, I think there's a lot of nice rebooting happening. Like, 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 you know, like a lot of things are resetting. So I, that's why if you were to have a caffeine break, you could have, it would be a good chance, like with the, the full sort of resetting and detoxing. And, and remember, there's a lot of epigenetics happening, right? Like genes being turned on and turned off. Like, like this is again, back to that very powerful level of change, right? Fasting is like a very powerful epigenetic lever right, to create big changes throughout the, like the gene expression um, in the system. Yeah, um, can you uh, give us just a real, um, a, a simple um, kindergarten version of, of what happens with ketosis and then what happens with this, the body kind of changing from, um, you know, dealing with, with food coming in and, and, and then transferring to kind of cell repair and all that. That happens. Yeah. I think that's an important point for people. So, uh, so, so ketones become the fuel when you're not giving when you're not giving your it, it uh, glucose. Um, ketones are going to become the fuel from the, like it, as a product of, of 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 the fat being broken down, and the great thing is it's a particularly great brain fuel. Um, the brain actually runs very well on ketones. Um, and it's a different metabolism, like, like, I mean, I don't want to go into the, the pathways, but like that level of complexity, but it, it is, it is a completely sort of different, um, it is a different system of burning. It's the backup system. Um, but, but there's a lot of salvaging going on, right? So, cause you, you when you're fasting, you still have protein needs and you, believe it or not, you still have carbohydrate needs, but the good thing is out of the three macronutrients fat, protein, and carbohydrates, your body can actually make carbohydrates, which is, which is cool. Like your liver through a process called neoglucogenesis can actually produce whatever carbohydrate need the body has um, from, from protein. Um, so we don't actually have to take it in, but that's part of the thing that's so powerful, right? Because we still have a protein need. The body says, well, we're not ingesting it, so we have to recycle it. And this is an example of the profound intelligence of the body where through this auto like autophagic process, it actually will, it, it has this intelligence to say, this is broken down and not useful. 
And it doesn't have to just be hanging around. It could just be not working well. And it will selectively. Um, now, I, again, this is hearsay, but I've, I've heard that people with longer fasting, like, for example, um, let's say you had skin stretching from pregnancy or uh, you've lost a lot of weight and you've got that extra belly uh, skin. With regular fasting over time, the body will even start to reabsorb like that. It's like that kind of level of intelligence. Right, like, like, like going. I'm, I'm going to find it in these different places. Now, again, we don't want to go into starvation. Like this is, this, this is that starvation is very dangerous. You're dying if you're starving, right? So this is a really important distinction. Um, and I think if you go beyond five days, like for me, when I went beyond seven, I was doing blood tests each week to know where my, particularly where my potassium was. I, I wanted to, you know, like I, there was, um, so I had uh, a relation with my doctor to be able to. Um, monitor that kind of that kind of thing there's also fasting clinics like there are clinics that you can go to that have that support for longer you know longer fasting um so but the thing Corey, that also when you said that that brought me up is the importance of refeeding because you can get yourself into a lot of trouble with refeeding you have to be very careful with that with fasting so the general rule is that you have to take whatever the number of days you've spent fasting you have to take a quarter of those uh 25 percent to refeed. So if I do a four day fast, I'm not eating regular on day five. I'm taking a day, you know, starting off with just like, you know, vegetable broth and maybe going to uh, like a bone broth, like, you know, like I'm just maybe starting with broth and maybe I'm going to make a smoothie with like uh, vegetables or very cooked, very steamed vegetables, like an Asian kind of cooking style. Probably not going to be introducing like meat wholesale in like day one or anything like, and, and then, so when I fast it, you know, when I fasted that 20, the 24 days, that, that's a six day, re, that's a six day refeeding, right? And that refeeding is even slower. Like I can, like if it's a four day fast, I can condense the refeeding within 24 hours. But on that six days, it was like broth day one, you know, and then the next day, right? And then, you know, maybe like reintroducing like kombucha and gut bacteria. The other thing I didn't talk about, uh, I think the question was about prep. But I do like to do a nat like natural laxatives before going in so that I'm not containing that stool and, and having it like an autotoxification from um, the stool that's in my gut, because obviously um, the gut will slow down when food's not going through it. Um, and, 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 um, and even when you don't eat, you will have stool still like every three or four days, like there will still be a movement or a passage. Often it's quite, it's, it's quite, it's, it's very different to stooling like what's coming through. Um, and I personally, and again, this isn't a requirement, but I, I personally will have um, intermittent water enemas, like, like, like just, just, just tap water uh, enemas um, every few days, just, and, and again, like, I'm, I'm not saying that that's, that's like, it's harder, faster, that there's, there's like big research with that. Like your, your body will still clear things. I think it's important to get the load out, the majority load out before you start though, like, you know, to have, um, you know, to, to have that kind of significant. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, I think it was like, you know, you can get like smooth move or whatever. That's what I think I did. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. There's, and there's, there's some that are less natural, some that are more, again, I'm not a dog. I don't have a lot of dogma around that, but like, but I do want to see that I've gotten it. Like I, I, I personally like to like when I pre fast, I often will take a lot of like I'll take like magnesium and vitamin C at higher levels because the magnesium uh, is a, a laxative and I like to have like like uh, like uh, a number of liquid stools so that I know I've sort of flushed that system and then sort of engage my fast and again you have to be careful you don't want to throw out your electrolytes before you even start like you, you know again so you have to have some some common sense and wisdom around that but I do like to have that sense that I'm not carrying any of that in on the gut. Uh, at least going into it. Uh, the other thing is uh, the skin is a great detoxifier, as is the tongue. So I'm taking like Epsom salt baths, I'm taking medicine baths like cedar, like, you know, more like because of the native traditions I engage in, sauna, lot a scrubbing, like getting like the layers of the skin off, like through these different days, brushing my teeth, like, like just with like brush and water, like, like getting like that tongue. Oh my gosh, the, t the armpits stink in the tongue, right? Like these things are just 
crazy as to I, I can't imagine what the Chinese medicine doctor would be saying, you know, on uh, like on these peaks and day three and five and seven as these things start to come out. It, it, it really is a remarkable. Uh, a, now, again, like I mentioned the eyes, but skin clarity and also like this, I mean, profound things like have you suffered all from any kind of autoimmunity or any sort of sensitivity, like all of the inflammation clears up. So the joints, the mobility, like, 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 like this just bottoms inflammation out to the bottom, like, you know, just to the very bottom of things. Yeah. Um, you really, like one of the things you said earlier that I thought was interesting was about like this not wanting to feel discomfort or like not, you know, needing the body to always be in the, in the fed stage and um yeah i'm curious if you can talk about other aspects that are kind of more like that or more like um doing work on our on our patterning that doesn't show up in like biology but more like in um in our attitudes towards the world yeah you know i i'm always amazed at these immature aspects of myself that show up in these early days that are just like you know, freaking out like, oh God, you know, I don't like, I don't like this. You know, like it's uh, as many times as I've done this, I still have to go through these funny phases of that. You know, like it's, it's, um, um, I, it, you realize like, like they're just, I mean, because I've also fasted in the native tradition and that's more intently of a spiritual fast, but that's even more intense. Like, no food, no water, some ceremonies dancing under the sun, but definitely out in the elements, like, like, you know, wool blanket around you, you know, spring, fall, like rain, you know, like there's, so, so there's a great example, like where there's lots of traditions that not only do they just allow the minimum, they create conditions that even crank that up even more, right? Like, it's like, you're not eating, you're not drinking, you're alone, there's no company, there's mosquitoes, it's raining, you're wet, you have a wool blanket, you're cold, like, you, you know, like all of these things coming together. And, um, and I guess a good word I would say to them is that they're, they're not only are they the thing in themselves, I think this is more important. So they're not, there's the benefit of transcending them right? Like, like dealing with them directly. And this is goes back to again, what I love that Corey talks about it, meet, literally meeting this reality, like in this moment, like they're very, they scream at you meet me, right? Like, 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 it's like they get that you, you have no choice. Like, well, you do have a choice, you could run away, you could stop, you could, you know, like, but like, they're just screaming. But more than that, they're also rocket ships. Like, like, you know, they are the engine that is going to get you out of the gravity of your habit of, of the stuckness of self. Like they're, they, that, that it's, it's like if you're on a rocket ship and all of a sudden, you know, it's the countdown and the thing is shaking, you know, and, and you're like, Oh God, and there's the countdowns on and all of a sudden they're lifting off and the gravity and the G forces and like, it's all uncomfortable. Right. But it is an engine that like, it's literally the engine and the fuel that is lifting you and rising you. And then at some point, it is the engine that lets you escape the gravities of all of those things. And then you're like free of them for the time. You'll come back to them. They, they, you know, you come back to earth at the end of your fast, you start eating your habits and you know, it all like it all, it, it will coalesce again. But there's this moment that you are free, like you are really free of those. Like it, everything gets, um, there's nothing is tight anymore. Like the body is light looser, the mind is looser. The emotions, like I said about the emotions freeing, like the relationships, like everything just becomes more spacious. And it was these catalytic hard things that let you escape it such that you could be in that more spacious place. And it's really wonderful. It's really wonderful. But you gotta work, but you gotta work for it. It's not for free. Like that's the thing. Like if it was, it would be easy. And and but I think there's like the like it, it isn't this is edge work. Like you 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 have to you have to work to stay on that edge. I love that image with the spaceship. <laughs> yeah. But um, you said to break the fast, you, you do it very slowly. 
Yeah, that 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 twenty percent rule. So the number of days that you've gone in, take twenty twenty five percent of that, and that's the and, and just think of the common sense, like slowly rebooting the system. And there is a, a real like if you had a long fast, like if you're seven ten days or longer, there is a real possibility of something called refeeding syndrome, and it can actually be life threatening. Like if you um, take in too much protein and just introduce this all to the gut, you actually can get in a, in a medically threatening uh, condition. And, and we see the refeeding, like prisoners of war, people of famine, uh, people that were like, uh, even these shows like, you know, like up in Alaska for the winter and the, even if they're eating, but they're, they're, they get stuck with protein, like a high protein and nothing, they can all get caught in these refeeding syndromes. So you've got to really slowly reintroduce. And that's hard because that's the and that's why it's so critical because you you're like I want to eat and the minute something touches your lips, <laughs> you know you're wanting more. So in some ways, it, it is almost a harder psychology to just like. Now the good thing is also though um, you're eating again habits, like you know everything slows down. Like it is true that everything slows down in the fast time. But but like you just don't you don't want to walk fast from A to B. You don't want to rush anything. Like like you you want to sip your tea and water. You just want to move through and enjoy it. And so you are coming out of the fast with a uh, a settling that it's like and a mindfulness that it's like oh there's taste oh there's chewing oh I'm already that it's already enough like I don't need to like obviously your stomach shrinks and you know you're full quite quickly so it's like ah that's enough like you you, you are in a better listening receptive place to be in, in tune Levi did you have anything to throw in today um yeah thanks um I've been thinking Bill, you were talking about the daily cycles of eating and um, the importance of sticking to that sometimes and being aware that snacking will keep us out of that dormancy kind of state. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering, is there a relationship or a similar relationship rather to drinking, um, water, water, tea, like whatever? I... I... You know, I, I, I think, I don't think it's as, as dry. I don't think it's, a, obviously the minute you have a calorie in it, don't think of it as drinking, think of it as eating. So if it's juice or Gatorade, or you put a sugar in your coffee or cream in your coffee, you're not drinking, you're eating. You just happen yeah. to be eating liquid food, right? So anytime that it's, there's, there's, there's calorie in there, you're eating liquid food, you're not drinking, which leaves us essentially then with water and teas, right? And so, I think like anything too, I think that there is probably things that I, I, I do think um, you have to be careful of, of over, like, I think we've got crazy because of marketing around hydration. So for example, um, marathon, people started having heart attacks in marathons after Gatorade became a thing. Because Gatorade was like, tried to tell the world that um, you were like, like you were dehydrated and your body didn't know it. Right. They said, by the time you're thirsty, you're already, you know, as though somehow your own um, senses of things weren't true. Right. Um, so I, I think that we have to be careful that I think we've gotten kind of in a hydration crazy world. Right. Where it's like you can't go through 10 minutes of an exercise class before you have to pick up your water bottle. Like, I actually think that those that these kind of I think these sine waves of you know, getting things out, sweating things out, then, you know, the process of rehydrating, coming back on, like that, anytime that you try to make things flat and constant, that's not a, that's not a biological rhythm, right? So I think, uh, you know, listening to your system. Now, I do think that often one of the reasons we overeat is because we probably aren't drinking enough. So they're like, again, you could look at sort of cultural habits that we probably should be taking in just more intrinsic fluids and that's always a good thing to go for rather than the food because like you know as a as the source of of um you know as because really sometimes it's just our it's our thirst that it's actually pointing to 
Um, but I, I think like the same type of thing, I would just look, you know, and say, okay, what are my natural habits? And again, you even see this as you get older, like, you know, you want to actually be able to sleep through the night. So you don't want to be drinking like three, three, four cups of water before bed, which means you're peeing in three hours. Like, like that, that's the kind of thing that I think you have to start looking and saying, does that make sense to break my sleeping rhythms? So when am I then tapering off my drinking and my eating, like, so that I am preparing for now, not only this thing called like, you know, we're not talking fasting and feeding, but awake and asleep. Like these are analogous types of human cycles that we have to, to bring into the right relationship, right? So, but it's good to think, but that's a good thing I would say. In, if it, It's liquid food if it's not water or, or tea. If you, if it has a calorie in it, you should be, you're, you should be thinking of it as food. Thanks. Super helpful. Awesome, Bill. Thank you so much. Anything sure. else before we head out here? Anybody else want to chime in? I kind of got to go work. So. The one before you, the one last thing I'd say is Corey's running off is like, this is actually like, if you uh, put this together with your, um, ZZ or non-directed practice, like this, or, or you're sitting, like this is actually a great coupling. Like, like this is a really, like this is a really fantastic, um, because you have a ZZ body with feeding and you have a CZ body with fasting, the non-directed body with feeding and you have a non-directed body with fasting. So this is, these are actually really quite, um, and, and again, I really love sauna and cold bath with fasting. And I find I'm able to experience like hotter and longer and more easier sauna. And I'm uh, the bath, the cold's a little more challenging because you are colder with fasting, but for some reason, I actually find I want to be in it more. There, there are odd things that come forward. Yeah. I just want to say thank you too. And um, like, I was actually just talking to some friends last night about how like, you know, I want to try like a day long fast soon. And I didn't know you were going to do this. Um, this talk today so it was like whoa cool um so just appreciating you're taking the time to share your uh, understanding with us and i think a day is a great is a great thing to start honestly you know and 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 um and even if you just go from like a, a dinner to a dinner as a first start just to get a feel of the discomfort a little you know to just feel like oh yeah that's the edge like i, I get that like i can be at home with that you know, that's a 23 hour fast, right? Like it's not asking too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that just thinking about that time too, like if you, you know, if you eat dinner at 6 PM and then you, then you do a three day fast, you have all that time before too, that you had, you know, so just thinking about timing and, and yeah. like what Bill said, 23 is that's, I mean, that's, that's like a day, but actually you're doing a little more if you, if you end your dinner at 7 PM and then you haven't eaten all night and then you have yeah. days ahead of that, that's, that's more time. So just thinking about that. And that's the other thing I'd say is you could do the 23 as the psychological, but if you can do 24, then do 36, go to bed and have breakfast the next day. Right. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like, cause you're already there. So just go to sleep and you've done your first 36 hour fast. And that's not an insignificant thing. Yeah. If you're athletic, the other way you could advance your fast is, is on day one of the fast, uh, have a good workout. Like the morning of day one of your fast, while you still have a lot of energy, go have a big gym workout and you'll burn off all your glycogen and you'll be in ketosis much faster, you know? So that's, that's another, that, those are hacks, right? Like, but they're, they're things to think about. Yeah. Right. Well, thanks for the, thanks for showing up guys. I appreciate yeah. it. You know, <laughs> Let me have my rant. <laughs> I think a bunch of people are going to listen to the recording and I'll, I'll record it and I'll, I put it up on my page. So it's, it's wonderful. Um, thank yeah. you so much for your, your, your yeah. knowledge. It's just amazing. So thank and you. And last so provisos, if you have health conditions, if you have medications you're on, these are all things you have to talk and work out with the doctor. Like, like there, there is nuances here, right? I just, we, we have to again, have a, an air of common sense, but let me just say that as a final sort of thing at the end, you know, because I don't want anybody to get into trouble and start low and slow and, 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 and build that's, that's always the best kind of wisdom around these things. And yeah.
And uh, yeah, at some point there, Corey, we should, you and I should have a, a catch up conversation. We haven't had one in a long time, so I'll reach out to you. <laughs> we'll Please, figure, I'll, figure I'll, out I'll, a time. Okay, I would love that, Bill. And I still think we should try to do something up there and um, around your place. We should do something. Well, I, I'm actually, I don't know if I can make it out for the whole Montreal weekend, but Montreal is close enough that I'm saying maybe I'll, I'll maybe Lisa and I might come up um, and just rent a, like get, get a place nearby and do a Friday, Saturday stand with you, like Friday night, Saturday stand with you guys Sunday and I'll come home Sunday night and back to work. I'm but I, 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 it'd be nice to even just see you for a couple of days in the midst of uh, just come and stand with everybody. I would love that so much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So wonderful. Wonderful. Thanks. Thanks so much, Bill. Okay. 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 We'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay,